Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. We have our ongoing coin series, which ongoing, I mean, we've had one episode. This giant box will be the start of our next series. Uh, it contains, if I can get it open, it should contain 25, over 25 pounds of wheat scents. So, um, let me get this open and then I'll explain what we're going to do. Boxes inside of boxes. Um, so, hopefully the easy box is done. And now we're, the hard box is done and now we're on the easy box. There we go. Packing okay. foam. But this is heavy. This is what we're after right here. That is a lot of pennies. And what we're going to do with them is we're going to go through them and fill up this penny album. Now, do I believe that we're going to get all of these Lincoln cents? No. But we should be able to fill up. Everything here onward. I don't know if this set includes the steel, the steel sensor or not, but we'll find out. It's going to be fun. So let me give you a preview of the pennies. And what we're going to do is we'll probably do about a pound or so per episode, which is roughly I'm thinking about four rolls worth of pennies to go through because they're all wheat scents. So we'll go through about four rolls each episode, and this will last quite a while. Um, there we go. That is a lot of wheat. So let me get this situated, and then we'll get into episode one. All right there, everybody, we got our giant bag of pennies. I'm gonna go through and just fill up four rolls worth for today, and we will go through them and see what we can slot in our album. Okay, we have our four rolls of pennies. I'll put the remainder of this bag aside. Um, there we go. So we got our book. We got our rolls of pennies. I did find this, which was um, weird. It's like I think somebody made a jewelry piece out of a, a 1946 penny. Um, but yeah, so I'll just toss that to the side uh, and we'll see what we can get. Now I'm just gonna go through these, uh, probably do a time-lapse type thing. If we find anything good, I will uh, slow the footage back down to show you what we got. So let's get started. Let's just use our three rolls. Just drop these out. Now the way I sort pennies is I have these, these little dividers which I label and then I just go through this my teens one. I have 40s, 50s, I have everything here. That's all sort through the pennies. Um, and then I will show you anything good that I come across. So let's get started. And one of our first things that we have is a 1916 Philadelphia. Um, not, again, it's a coal penny. So not in good shape, but is a 1916. Toss that in there, and whoops, and we'll keep on. Can't tell what this one is. Um, I think it's a 1911. Note my mark. Yeah, 
that's what it is. That's what we'll go with. 1911. Very good. Then we have pennies like this, which is a 19 something two, but it's been horribly damaged. So it's a definitely uh, something too. Uh, probably 42 would be my guess. I don't know. We will just put that there. And follow that one up with a 1919. Hey, 1919 is not bad. Very common teen year, but it's a 1919, so followed up by a 1925. Now we got a 1930 Denver, which, hey, take that, that's nice, right? And a 1920 Philly. Got a 1916 Denver. I like that. It's nice seeing some teens, teens wheat scents. And we got another 1920 something or other. Um, don't know. 1920X. Who knows? Damage makes it look like a five, but I don't think it is. Well, moving on. I want to say this is a 1918 Denver. Um, let me know what you guys think. Got a 1919 D. brings us to our second roll and this one has a hole in it that's cool 1936 but I told you these were sold as coal coal lots um, so a lot of these are corroded or holes or bent but I still like them I think we have another 1918 here it's really hard to tell we got a 1917 here. Let's put that over here so we can take a good look at it. Got 1917 Philadelphia. Nineteen seventeen D. That D is really worn. But it is indeed 1917 D. Another 1919 D. I think it's a 1912. Two rolls left. We got, ooh, one's rolling away. Hard to see, but that is a 1918. Mark there, I can't tell what it is. It's hard to tell, I believe that's a 1913. Yeah. 1934. Sweet scent, but I can't can't tell what it used to be. Hmm. What do you guys think? My 
1916 possibly. I don't know. We'll toss it aside. Two, an eight, a three. No, I think it's eight. Nineteen, eighteen. What do you guys think? We'll call it eighteen. If I'm wrong, yell at me. That's a nice nineteen fourteen. No mint mark. Too bad, eh? Too bad there wasn't a D on that. But hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? 1914. Okay, guys, the last roll of this episode. That one is stuck because it's bent. Bent 41. Sixteen. That's a pretty nice nineteen twenty five. That is a big glob of nasty. Twenty six D. Is that what I'm saying? Okay, everybody, let me put all the finds into the book and let you know how many we got. I'll be right back. All right, here's a look at what we've done so far in the book. The book has 140, uh, 140 spots. We have 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, PDNS 18, 19, 20, 23, uh, a lot in the thir 30s and 40s. But then when you get to the 50s, I only got a few from the 50s, which actually very much surprised me. So we have filled 52 of the 140 slots. Um, the best find is probably the 1916D. Or actually, I did get a 25S, even though it is pretty poor condition. Um, but yeah, these were just a cool lot. Uh, as you can see, they're in bad condition, but I'm happy. 1928D, 1920, sorry, 26D, 25S. Um, yeah, so not bad. Hopefully, in the next few rolls, we will get some upgrades and some additions. Like I said, there's a bunch of 50s and 40s that I'm missing. I was expecting more in those, but. It is what it is. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did and you want to see the rest of the series, please do subscribe. Uh, and I will see you next time. Mm, bye.